Now, this is quite a story from NASA because for the second time in history, a man-made object has left our solar system. NASA is saying the Voyager 2 probe is now in a space between the stars after exiting the sun's protective bubble, which is called the heliosphere. Voyager 2 was never meant to move again. Launched in 1907, it completed its mission and drifted beyond Neptune, silent and passive, until now. In 2025, something subtle but shocking happened. The probe shifted, just a fraction, just once, but it moved. There was no command, no malfunction, no warning. What followed was even stranger, sensor spikes, deep space radar pings, and a shadow crossing its path. Telescopes caught a fast-moving object, Military logs were sealed, and the data showed Voyager had changed direction, as if it felt something. This wasn't fiction. It was real telemetry from the edge of our solar system. What passed Voyager's path? Why did it react? And more importantly, was something trying to be seen? What started as a simple anomaly became one of the most unsettling space events in recent memory. Voyager 2 was silent for decades, but in the darkness, it just whispered something back. Fade in on Neptune's shadow. Voyager 2 has been quiet for decades. After passing Neptune in 1989, it left behind the last planet it would ever visit and drifted into deep space. For a year, it sent home simple data. Nothing dramatic, just the steady beat of a distant machine. But recently, something strange happened. Without warning or command, Voyager 2 altered its path, a shift so small most systems wouldn't notice. But this wasn't a glitch. It was intentional. The silhouette of Neptune still haunts Voyager's memory, its blue haze, faint rings, and Triton's icy geysers. But now, far beyond that frozen world, something crossed Voyager's path. The data was clear, a micro-adjustment in trajectory. Not a spin, not a system correction, a realignment. One engineer at JPL said it best. That thing moved on its own. As the footage replays, viewers feel it. The weight of silence, pierced by a moment that shouldn't have happened. Probes don't just make decisions. Voyager 2 wasn't built to react, but it did. And that's the problem. Because when a spacecraft that's 15 billion miles away suddenly changes course, without anyone telling it to, it means something told it first. On screen, the words appear. Event Horizon 2025. Deep Space Alert. A chill sets in. The story we're about to follow isn't a rerun of past discoveries. It's something new, something subtle, and something no one saw coming. For this mystery to matter, we need to understand what Voyager 2 actually is. Because it wasn't just any spacecraft. It carried the dreams of a generation, exploring every gas giant, each encounter more daring than the last. To grasp what it just did, we need to go back, before the anomaly, before the movement, to the long journey that made it legendary. Voyager 2's legacy. Voyager 2 launched in 1907 with one goal, to explore the outer planets. It did more than that. It became the only spacecraft to visit all four gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. It flew past ring systems, magnetic storms, and planetary oddities no one had seen before. Each encounter pushed the boundaries of what was known. It was science writing itself in real time. At Neptune, Voyager 2 gave us our first close-up of Triton, a frozen moon spraying geysers into space. It revealed the great dark spot, Neptune's violent storm, and the planet's unusual rotation. This wasn't just exploration, said one planetary scientist. It was proof the solar system still had secrets. After that, Voyager's cameras were shut down to preserve power. It would never take another image, but it would continue to listen. Since that last flyby, Voyager 2 has stayed alive, sending data back from instruments that measure plasma, magnetic fields, and cosmic rays. These readings are quiet, just slow, steady pulses, but they matter. Even in deep space, Voyager sensors help us understand the invisible environment between stars. It's a probe that lost its eyes, but never its sense of touch. 
Today, Voyager 2 is over 139 astronomical units from Earth. That's nearly 13 billion miles. It runs on the last breath of its RTG, nuclear power that may last until 2020. It was supposed to drift gently into the dark. Instead, it reacted. And that reaction has left scientists with one pressing question. What could have possibly triggered it? Voyager wasn't built for reflex. It wasn't programmed to dodge. So when a craft like that changes direction, you look at the logs, every entry, every system report. What you find there isn't just technical data, it's the start of a deeper mystery. Because what those logs show next doesn't make sense. The unexplained maneuver logs, hype inside JPL's telemetry vaults, the raw data sits. Every signal from Voyager is logged, analyzed, archived. So when the maneuver happened, the team pulled everything. There it was, a thruster event, a burst so subtle it only nudged. The craft by a fraction of a degree, but it wasn't scheduled. No command had been sent and no system fault was detected. Thruster health checks showed everything was normal. Hydrazine levels were stable, pressure lines held. There was no malfunction, nothing accidental. Engineers combed through the software logs down to the command queues and found nothing. The signal hadn't come from Earth. It hadn't come from backup logic. Voyager had simply moved. It wasn't just the movement that unsettled the team, it was the precision. A probe 13 billion miles away doesn't just reorient itself without a reason. It's like it flinched, said one systems analyst, as if something flew past it and it ducked. But Voyager 2 has no visual sensors. It can't see. It shouldn't even know anything past nearby. This wasn't a correction for trajectory. It wasn't even aimed at Earth. The maneuver didn't match any known calibration pattern. It was off book, off schedule, and off script. And yet it happened. The last time Voyager's thrusters fired without a direct command, never, this was new. And it meant the probe had either sensed something or something had triggered it. A spacecraft doesn't just shiver in the dark, not without cause. So the next step was obvious. Check the instruments, plasma, magnetometer, cosmic rays, all still online. What they found in that window just minutes before and after the shift sent a chill through the lab because Voyager didn't just move, it reacted to something. And now they had the data to prove it. Unusual sensor readings. Just before and after Voyager 2's unexplained maneuver, its sensors recorded a series of anomalies. First, the magnetometer, a device that reads magnetic field changes, picked up a brief disturbance. It lasted only seconds, but it was real. We've seen fluctuations before, a mission specialist noted, but not like this, not out here. The signal spike didn't match any known pattern. Next came the plasma wave subsystem. For years, this instrument has measured background vibrations in the plasma surrounding the probe. Usually it detects the gentle hiss of interstellar space, low, soft, steady, but this time it was different. A turbulence, a shift, not sharp, but organized. Something disturbed the local environment, said a physicist, and it happened at the exact moment the probe moved. Then the cosmic ray detector flared. Voyager registered a sudden spike in high energy particles. These spikes usually come from solar flares or background galactic activity, but solar conditions were calm. Galactic patterns were unchanged. And all three events, magnetic, plasma, and cosmic ray, happened within minutes of each other. That's not normal, that's coordinated. On their own, each reading might be dismissed. Together they form a moment, a window, something past Voyager, something interacted with its sensors, and whether that something caused the probe to move or whether Voyager flinched in response, it all happened in that same strange minute. That's the clue that turned coincidence into confrontation. Sensor data confirmed it wasn't imagination. Something had been there, but Voyager can't see. So scientists turned their eyes toward the region. Telescopes around Earth were already scanning the deep sky. What they found, an object, dim and fast, lined up with Voyager's path. It was real, and it was moving. Tracking the mysterious object. It started with a glint, captured by wide field telescopes in Chile and Hawaii. At first it looked like noise, then it appeared again, and again, moving fast, too fast to be random. It had no radio signature, no onboard transmissions, just reflected sunlight. Small, quiet, but definitely there. Orbital models quickly narrowed its path, and that path intersected Voyager's within a thousand kilometers. That's close by deep space standards. That's a near miss, one astronomer said, and we only caught it because we were already looking. The object was sub-kilometer in size, not a rock, 
not a comet, something else. Its trajectory didn't match anything from the Kuiper Belt or Oort Cloud. It wasn't drifting from deep interstellar space. Instead, its motion suggested a local origin, possibly ejected from Neptune's gravity long ago, a piece of debris, a fractured moonlit, or maybe a forgotten probe, scientists couldn't say. But the object had purpose. Its velocity was stable, its path clean. The alignment with Voyager's location was too perfect to ignore. It wasn't crossing randomly. It was passing near a 40-year-old spacecraft with functioning sensors. One question spread across research channels. Was this just chance, or was the object targeting proximity? Either Voyager crossed paths with an ancient piece of space junk, or something aimed to cross paths with it. The math was disturbing. The angles, the timing, it all aligned too well. That left only two possibilities. Either Voyager adjusted to get a better look, or it tried to avoid something. Either answer raised a terrifying thought. Could a machine from 197 detect and react to a threat? Could it protect itself? Alignment or avoidance? Overlaying the object's path with Voyager's trajectory gave the final jolt. The two paths didn't just intersect, they aligned. One near miss, one minute window. The probability of that happening by chance, according to mission analysis, was near zero. This wasn't drifting debris, said a flight engineer. This was proximity, intentional or not. Voyager's maneuver wasn't random either. The slight thrust nudged its antenna just a few degrees, enough to change alignment, either toward the object or slightly away. But with no cameras, Voyager couldn't see. So how did it know to move? One theory, residual AI protocols triggered an automatic reorientation, but those fail-safes shouldn't be active, not this far out. Another possibility, Voyager moved to enhance its sensor sweep. The maneuver might have helped the plasma system get a better read on the disturbance, but even that assumes a level of response design Voyager never had. There's no protocol for object evasion, an engineer confirmed. This wasn't in the mission profile. And then came the question that no one wanted to say out loud. Did Voyager sense something? Did it act on a signal, a pressure, a field shift? Or did something out there cause it to move? Either way, the probe changed its behavior at the exact moment something unknown passed by. And that may be the most important movement in Voyager's entire 47-year journey. Voyager wasn't built to react like this, and yet it did, which means we're either missing something in the hardware or something external made that decision for it. And now scientists had to ask the hardest question of all. What exactly passed by that day? Was it debris or something watching? What could it be? The first theory was simple. Debris, maybe a fragment of Neptune's rings or one of its tiny fragile moons. Proteus, Despina, Larissa. Voyager had seen them up close in 1989. Perhaps one had shattered, sent pieces drifting outward, but none were known to escape Neptune's orbit with that velocity. We don't have any record of outbound fragments, said a planetary geologist. And even if we did, they shouldn't have made it this far. Another idea emerged, a moonlit, ejected by tidal forces. Tiny bodies sometimes break loose from the pull of larger worlds. But again, the math didn't fit. The speed was too steady. The trajectory was too clean. Natural objects don't fly like this, one orbital physicist stated. This thing was gliding, not tumbling. That ruled out most natural debris. Then came the more exotic theories. A few researchers suggested a lost probe, maybe a forgotten part of a past mission, but there were no known missions in that region, and any old Earth-made probe wouldn't match the speed, direction, or silence of the object. If this was hardware, one engineer said, it's not ours. The wildest theory sparked the most debate. Could this be alien technology? A microcraft, a sentinel, something old, automated, and silent, a probe not designed to communicate, but to observe. The idea wasn't taken lightly. SETI researchers whispered the possibility. It wouldn't need lights, one said. It would just need a trigger, like a passing probe. And maybe it just got one. With speculation running wild, something even more unnerving happened. A radar ping, one no one was supposed to know about. From a system not tied to NASA or JPL, a defense network meant to track threats and it had something to say. They saw it too. Military radar confirms it. In the background of this cosmic mystery, military surveillance had quietly taken notice. Navy radar logs, leaked days after the maneuver, told a hidden story. An object, unidentified, silent, fast, appeared briefly on their deep space arrays. It wasn't a star, it wasn't debris, it was moving. The timestamp matched Voyager's maneuver to the second. The object was tagged in internal reports as a non-cooperative anomaly. That meant no transponder, 
no handshake, no known identity. We couldn't track it twice, said an anonymous defense contractor, but we saw it once, that was enough. The data was sent to US Space Command, and just like that, the sighting was sealed behind classified doors. Internal memos referenced the object's velocity and path, confirming its close pass by Voyager. And while no agency openly declared it hostile, the terminology used was unusual. Unbound asset, low probability intercept, maintain awareness. Translation, it wasn't debris. It was something worth watching. Military involvement changed the tone. Scientists wanted answers. Agencies wanted silence. Public discussion dropped off. What had started as a data anomaly now triggered radar alerts and encrypted meetings. A planetary scientist summed it up in one sentence. If it's strategic, it's not just science anymore. It's something else. The military confirmation poured gasoline on an already burning fire. Behind closed doors, theories were debated. But out in the world, the silence spoke louder than anything else, until the leak started and the public found out. What followed wasn't just interest, it was chaos. Expert debate and media storm. The moment radar logs leaked, the internet lit up. Forums flooded, news anchors led with graphics of Voyager and the mystery object. Astrophysicists appeared on camera offering calm explanations. It could be parallax, one said, maybe just overlapping data, but others weren't so sure. The event had all the marks of something deliberate. SETI researchers stepped into the spotlight, careful but curious. If it's artificial, that changes everything, one said on live TV. We've never had interaction this close. Meanwhile, security voices added tension. A former intelligence officer warned, we don't know what's out there, but we know when something moves like this, we take it seriously. Public reaction exploded. TikTok showed diagrams. Reddit threads analyzed Voyager's course. YouTube commentators dissected leaked memos. Every theory, alien weapon cover-up, had an audience, but beneath the frenzy was a real fear. Had we found something? Or had it found us? The ethical debate took center stage. Scientists were being silenced, data was pulled offline, and the public began asking hard questions. Who owns space data, one viral post read. If Voyager witnessed something, don't we all deserve to know? The pressure was mounting. And then, just when the noise peaked, Voyager spoke again. Just when it seemed the trail was going cold, a final signal emerged. Voyager had recorded one more anomaly, a final whisper in the dark. A transmission so faint it almost went unnoticed. But when scientists replayed it, they heard something that shook them. Voyager's whisper. It was buried deep in the data, just a low-frequency blip. The kind of thing most teams would filter out. But after everything that happened, nothing was dismissed. The plasma wave subsystem had picked up something. A direct signal. Too low to be noise, too clean to ignore. The waveform showed a narrowband echo, something bouncing back from somewhere. It didn't match solar noise or cosmic background. It wasn't natural. It's like something called out, said one researcher, and Voyager was the only thing listening. The signal was faint, one time, but undeniable. Then came the chilling realization. The signal occurred hours after the object passed, long after the maneuver. It wasn't a reaction. It was a response, a kind of return ping. Something out there had heard Voyager and sent something back. The final screen freezes on that signal, a sharp pulse buried in soft static. The voiceover drops low. Maybe we weren't exploring the stars, maybe the stars were exploring us. Fade to black, credits roll, the echo doesn't stop. For nearly 50 years, Voyager 2 floated quietly, an artifact of human ambition drifting further than anything we've ever built. But now that quiet has been broken, a maneuver no one ordered, an object no one recognized, a signal no one could explain. Some call it coincidence. Others suspect design. Whatever passed Voyager's path, it didn't just slip by unnoticed. It changed something. A probe with no eyes seemed to react. And when we looked closer, we saw why. A fast, silent shape, unmapped, untagged. And when military radar confirmed it, the silence turned to suspicion. But the final whisper, the faint, low-frequency signal hours later, wasn't noise. It was a return call, a cosmic echo. Voyager may not be alive, but something responded to it as if it were. In the end, we may never know what it was, but the question it leaves behind is clear. What else is out there watching us drift by?